very much. Thank you so much. What a joy to be with you guys, to be here in Houston at Houston's First Baptist. And I want to thank this church and uh, Pastor Greg Mott here for hosting us and uh, making this uh, possible. And I want to thank all the churches that are uh, participating all over the country. We have churches and, and, and small group Bible studies and home fellowship groups in 42 states around the United States, uh, as well as in Canada. India, New Zealand, who are all participating. So welcome. We're glad you guys are with us, and uh, God bless you. For the next three hours, we're going to look at some issues that are sobering, to say the least. And uh, we're going to take questions uh, from those of you here uh, at Houston's First Baptist. But we also want uh, to take questions from all of those of you who are around the country. Well, I don't know about all of you. I mean, we hope to take as many as we can in the three hours that we have here, but we would love for you to uh, tweet those questions in. Some of you already have, but you can tweet in your questions during the event, even those of you here, if you're thinking that you won't want to get up to the, the microphone, and you can do that at JCR flash traffic. Again, at JCR flash traffic, and... Um, we look forward to those questions. So this, is, this is an interesting moment in our, our country's history, and this is a book very different in many ways from any of the books I've previously written. I mean, yes, uh, it, it deals in large part with Bible prophecy, uh, because the number one question that I get asked as I travel around the United States and around the world is, what, okay, Joel, it's all fascinating you talk about Israel, Bible prophecy about Israel, uh, prophecies about Iraq and Iran and Russia and Egypt and Syria. That's all good. It's all fascinating. But what about us? What about the United States? Where is the United States in end times Bible prophecy? That is uh, usually the number one question that I get asked. Certainly it has been in the last few years. It's rivaled only, in my case, by Joel, how can you be Jewish and believe in Jesus? And that's a good question, too, and I, I, I love to answer both of them. Uh, but I was getting asked this question about the future of the United States so often that I decided to write a book about the United States, even though that has not been my primary focus. Um, but I want to begin in prayer this morning as we, as we look at some of these issues. And I want to raise four questions that I, I, I deal with in the implosion book, then we'll, we'll go to questions, but let me, I'm sorry, go to prayer, but let me just set up these four questions. These hopefully over the next three hours are going to be the major themes uh, that we discuss, and of course your questions can be variations of those or uh, generally speaking anything else that you want to talk about, I reserve the right to say no comment, on, uh, especially on political things. Uh, this won't be a partisan or political uh, event in any way. Um, I did, you know, I do live and work in Washington, D.C., and I'm a failed political consultant. Uh, everyone I ever worked for lost, so <laughs> I've gone through what I call political detox. I'm out. I'm clean. <laughs> this particular year, um, I need a patch to sort of keep that all <laughs> regulated, so I'm going to be on my best behavior uh, because these issues are much m more important than partisan politics. And I don't say that, that, that politics isn't an issue that's critically important in the future of our country. Uh, but that's not going to be our focus today. And uh, let's open up in prayer, but I, these are the four questions I really want us to wrestle through. In prayer, in the conversation, is because it's what I deal with in the book Implosion. First, how much trouble is America really in? I mean, is it, is it really possible that we could collapse, that we could implode? I mean, that seems like pretty strong language. Okay, we're having a rough patch, uh, a dry spell. Maybe we're in decline as a country, but collapse, implosion, is that really possible? That would be the first sort of set of questions. Secondly, uh, a question that was very pointedly asked me this week by Dennis Miller I was on his radio show, and we were talking about the first question, 
And he's like, yeah, 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 cut to the chase, man. Get to the point. What do you really believe? Is there any hope for our country? Or are we, you know, completely blown it? He put it a little more crudely than that, but I, I'm not going to repeat exactly what he said. But is there hope for America? Uh, can we turn around this country given how off track we really are? And, you know, 70, 80 percent of the American people believe that we are off track, and the question is, can we get back on track? Uh, is it possible, for example, to experience a third great awakening, a spiritual revival so sweeping, so game-changing, uh, evocative of the great awakening of the 1700s and the second great awakening of the early to mid-1800s, is it possible we could have a third one? That God would rescue our country by pouring out his Holy Spirit in a very dramatic and exciting way. That is one of the questions we want to process through, a set of questions, uh, today. Third, this issue of where is America in end times Bible prophecy. Uh, that being the question people ask most. And fourth, okay, you know, as, as my pastor likes to say back in Washington, D.C., so what? You know, okay, how do we live differently if all the things you're saying are true, Joel, and the scriptures that you will be teaching on today and the things that are in your book, if that's all accurate, what does that mean for us? How do we practically live in days that are as challenging and as sobering as these? So in that four general areas, those four themes, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to, to, uh, to spend time with us today. Father in heaven, I thank you for your grace and mercy. And I thank you for the opportunity to have this conversation uh, here in Houston, but in churches and in homes and uh, small group Bible studies uh, all over the country and, and several places in the world, Lord. I pray that you would uh, be with us and that you would reveal to us uh, your heart for this country and what you're saying to the churches and what you're saying to our leaders at every level of our society. Be gracious to us, Lord, and guide us. We pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When I was working on this book, uh, Implosion, I happened to be uh, on a phone call with the governor of a state here in the United States, uh, an American governor, and we were talking about Israel and radical Islam and what was happening in the Middle East, because that's my major focus, right? That's the books I write about, is what's happening in Israel and, and in the epicenter, as I call it, uh, in relationship to Bible prophecy, but also uh, here and now in the geopolitical world that we live in. And that's the conversation we were having. This governor was interested in those things. He's had a long-standing interest in these things, and so that's what we were talking about. But it being a year approaching the political season, uh, he asked me what I thought about uh, what was happening in the political realm. And, you know, again, I said, this, you know, I don't really want to talk about it too much. And this wasn't somebody running or anything. I don't want to, so don't, don't start guessing. That's not the point. The point is, um, so we were having this conversation. And at one point, he asked me, as we were talking about how much trouble our country is, is in, he asked me, uh, what happens to America in Bible prophecy? And it was the first time that a political leader had asked me that question. And it was, it was sort of striking to me. Um, I hadn't had that experience yet where um, a, a key leader in our country was asking a, a question that I hear from people all the time, everywhere I go, but I thought that the fact that he sees that this country in so much trouble and, it's, and that's something that's curious to, you know, uh, we're in big trouble here. And again, same basic theme is, you know, what happens to America? The reason people are asking that uh, is because they're deeply, deeply concerned about where we are. Uh, I was actually heading to a uh, radio interview uh, earlier this past week, and uh, uh, the radio station, it was, it was a late interview. It was live, and it was uh, a one-hour interview from 11 to midnight, uh, one night, and for some reason I said yes to doing it, and so I, uh, they sent a, a car from a car service to get me at my house, because so, I was, 
you know, probably not going to make it on my own. I'd be, I was a little sleepy. So they were very kind. They sent 